And, um, but Lydia was a part of that church there that was founded. And so Paul writes a letter to the Philippians here. And um, in chapter 2, he's writing a letter here to the book, the church of Philippi, just kind of checking up on them. And look in verse, um, look in verse 17. Uh, verse 16, holding forth the word of life that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. Look, verse 17, yea, and if I be offered upon the sacrifice and service of your faith, I joy and rejoice with you all. Paul's, I think he's in prison when he's writing this. Now watch this, verse 18, for the same cause also do ye joy and rejoice with me. So he's talking to them and he's telling them he's glad they're saved. And even if it cost him his life, I mean, he's in jail. If it gave his life and he knew that they were saved and their faith would continue on, that was a blessing to him. Now look at verse number 19. But I trust in the Lord Jesus to send Timotheus shortly unto you. Timotheus, that's Timothy, one of Paul's preacher boys that I also may be of good comfort, now watch this, when I know your state. Paul writes his church and he says, I'm sending Timothy to you and he's going to bring me news about your state. What's, what's the state of the church there in Philippi? And I looked that word up, you know, how you use it there, state. You know, it's not talking like Arkansas and Texas and Louisiana. It's not talking about that kind of state. It's talking about what kind of condition. Are you in? How, how are things going? How's the health? How's the condition of the church? Um, I, <laughs> I go see doctors regularly, okay? I got a doctor's prayer list. I think I got like 22 doctors on my prayer list. And these are all doctors that have treated me or I've seen for one thing or the other. And then one time Arlington saw my prayer list and said, you got Dr. Davis there, but that's not the Dr. Davis I go to. So I got two Dr. Davises on there. I've never seen the second one but it's Arlington's doctor, so I put him on there too. And so I pray for these doctors, and I went to, the, to see my dermatologist, okay? And back years ago when I had my skin cancer, I went to see, there wasn't a dermatologist in um, El Dorado then. I had to go to, to um, Ruston. And I had some spots on my face, some skin cancers. And the guy said, I'm going to do a biopsy on this one because I'm, you know, he said, I'm 98% sure everything's okay, but we just want to be sure. And he said, if everything's okay, we'll call you on Monday and tell you everything's okay. This was on a Monday that I went in, but he said, if we find out something else, we'll call you earlier. And on Thursday, I got a phone call from the doctor, and the lady told me, Mr. Weedo, we got the results of your biopsy, and it's a malignant melanoma. And so I had to go and have a couple surgeries on my face and had – of that cancer removed and had to go through radiation and all. So every year now I go and see a dermatologist once a year and they, you know. And so I go in and they froze off a couple spots, one there and one one there, I think. And um, I had one on my arm out there and one on my back, a little moles. And she said, I want to go ahead and take these off and we'll send them in for a biopsy. And so... I'm waiting to hear back, okay, because it has to do with the state of my health. And if something's wrong, I want to be proactive about it and try to, you know, try to do better or take care of it. And so that's what the state of the union is. And, you know, there's always a lot of political maneuvering and, you know, depends on who, you know, what they do. And they try to make things, you know, if look good or look bad or whatever. But, you know, we need we need a, a state of the church too. Just like Paul wrote, look at the next verse. Verse 20, he says, For I have no man like-minded who will naturally care for your state. Two times there. You don't find the word state used that much in the Bible like this, but these two verses in a row. Paul said, I want to know your state. And he said, I want somebody that will care for your state. And just like we ought to be concerned about the state of our country and our union, and we have an opportunity as citizens to, you know, participate in the elections and all that kind of stuff, and we do what we can, and um, it ought to be that way with the church, too. We ought to want to know, and, you know, Brother Paulie said that his greatest burden is not just for the state of the union politically 
or economically, but for the state of the church spiritually. And I thought this was a good, a good um, article that he wrote. And he said the condition of the nation is deeply rooted in the condition of the, sta- of the church, of God's people. And we've heard this saying before, as goes the church, so goes the nation. And so he said, I'm frequently asked, you know, what are the things you see as you travel across the country? What are the trends you see in the churches that you go to? And he said, you know, I'm just reading. You got the same notes I do. I just gave you the whole article. And uh, he said it's easy to make broad generalizations, but he said that there's some things that he's consistently observed about the state of local churches. And he's a, a local church evangelist. He's our type, if you please, our flavor. He's an independent Baptist, and he goes to churches just like ours, big and small, all across the country. And these are some observations that he made, and I thought these would be good for us too. Number one, he said the church needs to return to genuine prayer genuine prayer brother eric gave that testimony this morning brother eric reminded me god really did a work in my heart and my prayer life when our mom was in the hospital because it's easy you know preacher will say how many y'all pray you know he baptized somebody how many y'all pray for little johnny getting baptized today and everybody raises their hand and brother jd says let's just go ahead and stop and pray for him right now because the truth of the matter is most of us that raise our hand, if we don't pray right then, we might forget to pray for little Johnny. Does that make sense? I mean, I'm just being honest. I'm being transparent with you this morning. And it's easy. You know, we got a prayer list back there, you know, from um, that Miss Peggy puts out every week. You know, and there's a lot of names on there. And it's easy just to go, you know, God bless Kenny Allen, Diane Anders, and just go through the list. And that's good. That's better not than nothing. Okay? But Brother Eric, when it was my mom that was on the list, and I've told Brother Eric this before. I remember when his mama went home to be with the Lord. When it was my mama that was on the list, I wasn't wanting people to say, yeah, I'll pray for Miss Weedo. I was wanting people to pray for Miss Weedo. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's one thing, you know, Brother J.D. gives us names of these guys, and Brother J.D., I want to get a list of those names. But it's something else when Brother Eric says what he says. Why? Because those are his guys. I mean, he knows them. He's been there with them. What are you saying, Brother Bob? I'm saying if it's your friend, your coworker, your mom, your wife, your kid, you want people to be earnest, you know? Right, right Miss Candy? I mean, Brother Rick, her husband, was really, really sick in the hospital for a long time. And we prayed. We prayed every service for Brother Rick. And Brother Rick's doing better. But I'm just saying, Brother, Brother Paul, he says, the, the church needs a return to genuine prayer. I mean, pray like you pray when it's your loved one. Okay? And this verse is not in your notes. I put it in mine this morning. It's an obvious verse, and we use it all the time. But Second Chronicles, turn back there. You got all these verses in your notes, so if I don't get to them, I'm not worried about it. 2 Chronicles 7, and let's just look at that for a minute. So, Brother Bob, everybody knows this one. Well, I know. We all know what we're supposed to do. It's not the things that I don't understand in the Bible that worry me. It's the things that I do understand because I ain't doing all the ones I know I'm supposed to do. So that's all we talk about here, prayer, you know, well... Maybe if we prayed a little more, we wouldn't talk about it so much. Amen. Second Chronicles. Look here at the text. Okay, the context. Look at verse number 12. Solomon's got the temple there. and he, Verse number 11, he finished building the house of God, the house of the Lord. Okay, David wanted to build a temple for the Lord, but God said, you can't build it, David. You're a bloody man. You've killed too many people. I don't want you building the temple, but you, your son can do it. He's young. He's tender. He don't have the, the history of being a warrior that you do, and so I'm going to let him build it. So David got all the things together for his son, and then Solomon finished it in verse number 11, and he's praying now. In verse number 12, the Bible says, The Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer. Amen. Isn't that a blessing? God hears prayers. Don't ever forget that. Okay? God hears our prayers. Now, sometimes it may seem like he doesn't, and, and, and let me be quick to say there's things we can do that hinder him from hearing our prayers, and there's things we can do that will cause him not to hear our prayers, 
Okay, but it ain't because he can't hear them. Okay, it's because we got something between us and him that may keep him from listening to us. But you can be sure he hears. He said, I, hear, I heard thy prayer and have chosen this place to myself for a house of sacrifice. So God is saying, Solomon, this temple that you built for me, I, I've chosen to be here. Look what he says in verse number 13. <clears throat> if I shut up heaven that there be no rain, okay, or if I command the locust to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people. What's God saying? Hey, if I have to get y'all's attention down there, if I have to do something, he's, talking, he's not talking about the world here. What's the last two words in verse 13? My people. Okay? If you, you know, if I have to do something to get your attention, he says there in verse 14, if my people, there's that phrase again, which are called by my name. You say, well, that's the Old Testament. He was talking to Solomon. Are you his people this morning? I am. I'm one of his people. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. We had a little a black girl in the church one time, and she told me, she said, Brother Bob, I'm one of his sheeps, and I'm one of his peeps. And I said, Secure, what, you know, peeps, what's that mean? She said, I'm one of his people. And I said, okay, well, I'm one of his sheeps, and I'm one of his peeps too. Okay? And, um, I'm one of his people. If my people, which are called by my name, and we're called by his name, okay? How many of y'all are Christians this morning? Got the Lord Jesus. Okay, we're his people. We're called by his name. So even though this is Old Testament, applies to us, okay? Applies to us. Shall humble themselves and what? Pray. But he gives some conditions here in, in, in my mind. If, it's if, that's a conditional word. We got to humble ourselves. I mean, we're talking about prayer now. You know, the Bible is a really good commentary on itself. What's it mean we need to pray? Well, we need to humble ourselves. When we pray, we need to, we need to be humble. We need to be coming before God realizing who he is and who we're not. I mean, we don't go to God like a big shot demanding something. Like, you know, you might go into your office, your boss's office and say, I demand a raise. And you might get one or you might get something else. Amen. I mean, you got to have the right attitude, especially when you're speaking to somebody that's over you. So he says, if I humble myself, humble themselves and pray, and look at the next phrase, seek my face. What do you think that means? Get his attention. Our prayers ought to get God's attention. We ought to seek his face. We ought to be, you know, going in the direction that he's going. I mean, he ought not to be so far from us that we can't even look him in the eyes. You ever told your kids, look me in the eyes? Or, 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 or this, have you ever had a little kid? Maybe you're holding one of your grandkids or your kids or something, and you're trying to do something, and they're sitting in your lap, and they're trying to talk to you, and they get your face, and they turn your face so you look at them. Okay, you know what they're doing? They're seeking your face. They want to make sure you, you, you're paying attention to what they're saying to you. Okay? And look at the next one. Turn from their wicked ways. That's some of the things that hinders our prayer sometimes. Sometimes we're not on praying ground. I mean, the Bible talks about how our iniquities can separate us from God, and he won't hear our prayers. Okay? And he says, then, when, when we meet these conditions. Okay, we're talking about the church needs to return to genuine prayer. Genuine prayer. I mean, we got to, you know, we got to get right with God. We got to get busy with God. I remember we had an evangelist. I've told it before. Brother J.D., you remember Brother Hooker was here. Brother Bob Hooker is an evangelist. got several daughters. I don't know, five or five daughters maybe, something like that. And um, they travel around. His girls are all grown now, but they travel around and sing as a family. And um, he told us about one time they had a wreck, a bad wreck, and one of his daughters was bad. He didn't even know if they were going to make it to the hospital. And he said, I needed to get a hold of God. And he said, I need to get a hold of him right then. And he said, there wasn't no time for me to be getting, you know, if, if I'd have been backslidden and not right with God where my prayers were hindered, my daughter would have died. And he talked about how the importance of, of staying on praying ground is. Amen. Amen. 
Okay, I'm talking about, you say, Brother Bob, we all know we're supposed to pray. I know we do. And we probably all pray too. But he didn't say we need to return to prayer. He said we need to return to genuine prayer. I mean, the kind of prayer that Brother Eric's talking about this morning, when somebody you love is in the balance and you know God's the only one that can help them. You understand this morning there's no prayer too big for God to answer? There's no prayer too little. I remember one time Janine lost her purse when she was a little girl. Okay, a little girl lost her purse. Is that, is that a big deal? It was to her. And she prayed, and God, right after she prayed, she found her purse. Well, he said, well, I said, God answers little prayers, but there ain't no prayer too big for God to answer either. And sometimes we limit. There's a verse in the book of Psalms that said, you've limited the Holy One of Israel. And I'm afraid sometimes we limit God with our little prayers. Ephesians 3.20, you got that one there? He's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. Okay, now we got to understand, and my dad always taught us this, and I tell the kids in Christian school, there's three ways God can answer. He can say, yes, that's what we want. He can say, no, we don't want that. And he can say, not now. Okay, and unless he says no, I won't keep. You, your kids ever bug you when they were little? They wanted something and they'd just wear you out. And finally, whether you wanted to give it to them or not, you gave it to them, just shut them up. Well, God's like that sometimes. I mean, he gives examples in the Bible about our importunity and how we just got to keep on praying and keep on praying. Okay? Um, Matthew 21, we're talking about the church, how his house is supposed to be a house of prayer. And yeah, we have a Wednesday night prayer meeting and we have prayer lists, but God looks down at Bible Baptist Church and he thinks that's a praying church right there. I'm asking. Okay, these are things Brother Pauly talked about as he traveled across the country, some trends he sees in churches. Return to genuine prayer. There's some other verses there. Number two, the church needs gospel laborers. Gospel laborers. Matthew 9, 38. Remember what Jesus said? Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. Miss Lydia, that, you know where our book of songs is that we sing? Can you find that? See if you can find that song, Wide Into Harvest. I think it's in there. The church needs gospel laborers. We've got to get the gospel out. Who knows what the gospel is? What's, what's the definition of the gospel? Two words. Anybody tell me? Good news. Good news. I mean, i got an app on my phone. I don't know where you shop. I shop wherever I can get whatever I need for the cheapest price. i got Max Fresh Market app on my phone, and every week they got a... <clears throat> little scratch and wind deal. <clears throat> it's not a big deal to me this week. You can get a four-pound bag of sugar for 99 cents, okay? But a lot of times it's something free. You just go in and show them that little coupon and walk out. They had, um, we got bottles of water, 24 bottles of water for 99 cents. That's a pretty good deal. What's a dollar divided by... 24, that's about, you know, not even a nickel a bottle. I mean, that's pretty cheap. So you know what? We went to, and we got a case. And I told Miss, I put that app on Miss Lydia's phone and went back in and got another case off of her coupon. If I find a good deal, you know, I mean, tell somebody. You know, so-and-so's got, uh, I called Brother J.D. and said, I saw where um, um, the barbecue place got their, you know, ribs for, you know, a reduced price. We like ribs. Amen. Got a good deal. I like to share it. Amen. Anybody here know a better deal than we got? When we got saved? Amen. When we found out the gospel, when we accepted the gospel, and we became God's children, man, that's a good deal. 
And Jesus said, pray. He said, the, the harvest is plenteous, but the laborers are few. And he said, pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he'll send forth laborers. Did you know that we could answer our own prayer? That prayer. There's some prayers that we could answer ourselves. We can pray to the Lord to send forth laborers, and you know what we can do? We can become a laborer. You know what? We can take some of those gospel tracks back there. Stefan helps me every week. He refills the track rack for me. Why? Because I don't want you to be like me. I'll be honest. I've been going through the drive through somewhere, or Burger King or something like that, and look, reach up in my, and I was out of tracks, and I didn't have one. And all I had was like a Chinese track, and it wasn't a Chinese person that was helping me. Okay, y'all are laughing. I ordered some Chinese tracks from uh, oh, um, a track place that has free tracks. So when I went to the Chinese restaurant, you want to get a funny look on a, on a Chinese waitress's face? Hand her a track, track in Chinese. And they looked at this last one that we had. We had a new waitress last time we went there. And she looked at it, and she looked back at us, and she smiled. And she looked down at it, and she started reading. She looked at us, and she smiled again. I missed one thing to give them a... a you know, now, I had what I thought was a Chinese track one time, and I gave it to the lady at the Chinese restaurant, and it must have been Vietnamese or something. I mean, it looked like Chinese to me, and she took it, and she looked at it, and she shook her head and, like that, you know, and so I thought, oh, big dummy, and I looked on the back, and it wasn't. It was like Filipino or Vietnamese or something. I said, like, that's kind of stupid, you know, trying to be, you know. Um, but anyway, I got some Chinese tracks that I order and give it to them. Why? Because they need the good news, too. I mean, we got 10,000 of those tracks, just got them in. We got to be laborers. We can, we can help. I went to school, actually my dad and mom went to school with a guy named Leonard Moody, went to Bible college. He wrote this. Listen to this. It says, I gazed in awesome wonder at a field of ripened grain as it glistened in the sunlight nourished by the summer rain. Can you picture that? There's a field. It's already ripened grain. And he says, and I thought of how the reapers must make haste, else all was lost. Loss for lack of reapers. What an awful, awful cost. He said, I could see this field, grain, ready to be reaped. I remember when Brother J.D. used to raise um, hay commercially. And there's a time, and he could explain to us about but there's a certain time that you've got to cut the hay and if you cut it too early, it's not good as it could be. And if you cut it too late, it loses some of the nutritional value. So there's a time w when it's time to get the hay out of the field. And if you don't get it out, it's going to lose value. Listen to this verse. Then I thought of other harvest where the fields are also white and the reapers working frantic through the day and through the night. Yet so many still the message of his love have never heard. Still his voice echoes from the pages of God's word. And the chorus says, Wide unto harvest, O see the whitened fields. These are the tender words of Jesus, and we must be the reapers to gather in the grain. White unto harvest, Christ is pleading again. Y'all know, I told y'all, those of you there, regulars in my Sunday school class my favorite Christmas verse is 1 John 4:14. 4, you say I didn't know that was a Christmas verse it says this for we have seen and do testify that the father sent the son to be the savior of the world okay the father he did his part he sent the son the son he did his part he became the savior of the world but the first part of that verse tells us what our part is. We have seen. Amen. We've seen. I ask you a minute ago, how many of you are saved? Everybody in here look like raise your hand. We have seen and do testify. Our part is to see what he did for us, accept it, amen, and then be a testimony. Amen. Testify. Let other people know the church needs gospel laborers. First Corinthians, it talks about how in chapter 3 it talks about we're laborers together with God and in chapter 6 it says we're labor together with him 1 Corinthians 15 talks about how our labor is not in vain 
in the Lord. We got to be steadfast. I mean, we don't need to quit. We need to keep going. We need to keep going. Uh, Brother Andy and Brother Ben can remember when they were little boys. There was a time of visitation here. We had to take we had to take buses. That, we had to take a bus out on visitation. I mean, we used to have visitation on Tuesday night. And we used to have a bunch of folks. I mean, a bunch. We still got visitation Saturday morning at nine thirty, and I know this has been a crazy year, and you know we weren't able to do everything we want to do, but we're getting more able. This lady and I went. She needed to get something at Walmart yesterday, and my word. I, I think everybody in Union County was at Walmart yesterday. I don't know what they had going on. Somebody know what they had going on? The one entrance to Walmart, there was a line all the way out to the road, all the way out to Northwest Avenue. It was a solid line on the the first the first entrance going in from here. I don't know what was going on, but it wasn't normal. Okay, if everybody's back out for to Walmart, you know, I mean, we might could start coming back for visitation on Saturday morning. I'm talking to us. We were, we were coming real regular, and then we got out with all this stuff going on, and we hadn't got back, but we need to. I mean, the Bible says, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. What's our theme? Others. Number three, and, and you got all the verses, so increase faith. We looked last week at, at 2 Timothy chapter 3 and about how it ain't going to get no better out there. Evil seducers are waxing worse and worse. But the next verse, verse 14, says that we're supposed to continue in the things that we have learned. Our faith, we need, our faith needs to be strong. We need to, to, to realize God's able. God's able. I've got my notes all mixed up here. How many points you got on yours? Three? Okay. Increase faith. Increase faith. Verse Luke 18, 8. You got that on your notes? Yes. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh. How many of you understand Jesus is getting ready to come back? Amen. I've heard that my whole life, but I'll tell you what. He's closer to coming than he was yesterday. One of these days, he's coming. And the question is asked here, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? I want him to find it here at our church. I want him to know we're still standing by the stuff. We're still trusting him. We're still believing him. But then Brother Pauly kind of, the article was fine, and then he said this. Let's get personal for a moment. What about me? What's the state of my prayer life? I thought about that song. I put the song in. Not my brother, not my sister, but it's me, oh Lord, standing in need of prayer. You know what? It, my prayer life, I need to work on that. Okay? I mean, it's easy to look and see, you know, somebody else has got a deficiency, but what about us? What about me? What about my prayer life? What is the state of my gospel witness? When's the last time I got a handful of tracks and talked to people? When's the last time I opened my big mouth? I'm going to tell somebody, hey, Max has got a good deal. You want some free ketchup? Well, that's what, we got two bottles of ketchup free one week. I don't have to buy nothing, no 99 cents or anything. Just go in. My wife, she don't like to go in and, and just get the free thing. I said, that's no big deal. They shouldn't put it on there if they didn't want you to come in. I mean, if you got a coupon, it's a free. You don't have to go in and buy fifteen dollars worth of stuff you don't need just to get the free bottle of ketchup. You could have bought fifteen bottles of ketchup for that. Take the coupon in, get the free ketchup, and come on back out. <laughs> then when you get back here, take my phone and go in and get the free bottle of ketchup for me. Okay? I mean, I don't know what the big deal is. I'm the one sitting in the car waiting for her while she's doing that. <laughs> Amen. What about the state of my gospel witness? Amen. Are you handing out, and I put down our theme song, Others. Others, every time we're looking up here, we see that. Then what is the state of my faith? Where do I need to believe God at this moment for greater things in my life? You know, 
I just thought this was a good little devotion. I've got a, a new book that we're going to start, okay? One of those like we used to do. Oh, by the way, the, the first and last time um, faith is mentioned in the Bible, it's only mentioned two times in the Old Testament. I thought that was unusual. Faith is mentioned like 250 times, over 250 times. The Bible is mentioned twice in the Old Testament. The first time it's mentioned in Deuteronomy, and says they're a very froward generation, children to whom is no faith. And then the last one's in uh, Habakkuk 3, 4. says the just shall live by his faith. So in the Old Testament, you either got it or you ain't got it. It's no faith or you're living by his faith. And when I'm looking at the state of my life, I want him to know I'm living by faith. Amen. I can't do what I need to do without him. I'm trusting in him. Appreciate y'all being here this morning in time for Sunday school.